who wants their whole house stinking like garbage dump? Not me. Uh, so we got that pretty well coated there. Almost looks like a Christmas tree, like pine or something. So now that that is done, I'm going to go ahead and set this to the side here. Should have another piece under here. Oh, and there goes our giant toe. Perfect timing. Let's take a look at that real quick. And you can see I got the uh, green thumb going on right here. Speaking of green thumbs, we have the biggest radish in the whole universe in our backyard. It's gigantic. Ah, yeah, there we go. That's coming along nicely. Okay, so I'm going to use this finger. Yes, it's hot, obviously. I'm going to check the consistency. Now the outside's getting a little thick. That's good. I'm going to put it in for, I think, maybe another 20 minutes or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Take it easy on it. So, yeah, I'm going to add another 20 minutes to this. Alright, so I got this that I've been using this on um, to paint. So I got the coarse turf right here. I kind of feel like I want to do a shake and bake thing. Whoops. So let's see here. What can I use for a shake and bake thing? Uh, maybe that'll be easier for you guys at home. Let me see if I have a bag I can use here. I think that I do. Alright. Awesome. Now, if you're going to use a bag, check the bottom. This one looks like it's pretty good. Gordon Food Service bag. Made to carry heavy stuff. Um, you don't want this turf all over the floor because it's a son of a gun to pick up. Like I said, it's coarse turf and light green. Okay. And just because I like a little bit of a dimension to um, things that I paint, I'm going to go ahead and take just a little dab of white here, kind of smush it down, cut like that. I'm going to drag it throughout this. It may it may not show, but dimension is not a bad thing when it comes to painting. If anything, it's just going to make it look a little modeled. Okay? So go ahead and just kind of tap that on there. Like I said before, it looks a little Christmas tree. That's okay. That's all right. Once we put this stuff on here, it should look pretty cool. And maybe we can even add a little bit of yellow. Because in the game, I, I kind of remember it being kind of a sickly color. I think we add a little bit of that yellow in there. A little bit more like that. Drag it across. We don't want it too vibrant. We want a kind of sickly, yucky color. So, yeah, I'm just kind of, I get all into it at this point. <laughs> you might not be as messy. That's fine. I don't really care. Uh, I'm just trying to show you the best way to get this done. But um, nothing's wrong with stamping it. That's probably the best way to do it if you want to be um, messless. Go ahead and stamp it on the paper like I was doing earlier. I just want to get this done in time to do our bear claws and for our book. Okay. So we're doing good there. Alrighty. That's a little bit better of a color. Now I'm going to go ahead and open this up with my other hand, since this hand's all yucky. I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of this in here. What's not being used, I'm sure we can put right back in. So I'm going to dump a big amount of it in there. The idea is to throw this in there before the paint dries. Okay? So we're going to shake and bake like Talladega Nights. Am I allowed to say that? Well, I just did. <laughs> Help me, Tom Cruise! <laughs> Alright. That's nice and shook there. So let's see how that worked out. Ooh, that looks nice. That looks awesome. Just like I thought it would. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. There you go. You got some hanging moss. Compliments of myself and Wolf Spirit. Pretty nice. Pretty cool. Okay, you can see it's got that kind of three dimension to it. Looks just like the game. Pretty darn close. We're going to worry about putting that back in a little while. I'm going to put this to the side for the moment. 
You know, it's getting a little messy over here, but that's okay. So I'm going to let this dry, and I'll let it just kind of sit right here. I'm going to put it over to the side here. Put this back on. Now I had two of them out there, but I don't think we really need two of them. So I'm going to put this one right over here. Close that up. And I'm going to put that back up here out of our way. Um, since I have this green here, I am going to go ahead and get off my hands because I'm going to make the bear claws next. So we're going to be throwing that into the giant toe uh, that's cooking. We don't want it to uh, be too far gone where we can't throw it in there at the same time. So that'll be defeating the purpose. Now, it's not the end of the world. If it is, you can always do it later, but you'd like to do it now if you can. And if uh, you do get paint on your hands, it's good to clean it off as soon as you can. See, I got mine pretty much off right away. Just make sure you do it quickly. Okay. All right. So now we have these colors um, that we did earlier. I'm going to go ahead and put this to the side for a moment. I'm going to stack them on top of each other. This one's almost dry anyway, so it's fine. I'm going to put this over here, and I'm going to use my bowl again. Now, we're kind of out of luck as far as putting it on a plate at this point because we already have it one in there, and we're not going to bring it out and throw it in there again. Um, that's going to do all kinds of weird things. So I'm going ahead and I'm going to clean my brush real quick. I'm going to take just a little bit of the towel. You don't need to use a whole bunch. Put that right here. Okay. Make sure you clean that real good. I still have some green up here, but that's fine brush itself needs to be clean. Not the handle is not the end of the world. I'm sure there's a proper way that super amazing artists clean their brush, but I just slap mine around the water. As long as it's clean is what's important. I'm not doing fine oil painting. I'm painting skyward books. <laughs> so as you can see there, it's nice and clean. I'm going to go ahead and put that back to the side. And now I'm going to take out another one of my paper plates I have here that I put to the side. And I'm going to use that to put my bear claws on for the moment. Not going to grease it up, it's a paper plate. I'm not too worried about it. If it's jacked up, oh well. So actually, and, uh, we're going to use that for painting for later, the one that we were keeping on top so it wouldn't get dried out. And let me see, I'm running out of room on my little art table. You can see here, I'm going to touch it. Consistency is still good. If the top is real hard, you need to peel that off, otherwise it's going to ruin your um, your sculpture, whatever you're using it for. Whether it be Skyrim stuff or Christmas ornaments with kids or whatever. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move that to the side. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. And the nice thing about this dough is, too, is that after it sits for a little while, it does get a little thicker. It's a little bit easier to work with. So if you want to, you can put it in the fridge and have it covered. Um, when it's a little bit harder... Um, it's just easier to sculpt with. So we got that kind of hang to it, but not too much as you can see. Okay? So now we're going to make three bear claws. So bear claws can be more flat. That's fine. We're going to take three little pieces. Okay? We're going to divide it into three pieces like this. And we're going to kind of take those pieces. Let's see here. Now, yes, yeah, so you know what? That's the one thing, though. When you use a small piece like that, it gets warmed up, just like any kind of dough or clay you think. Um, when it gets heated, it's more malleable. So since they're smaller pieces, I am actually going to go ahead once again and throw it back in there and add some more salt, just to thicken it up a little bit. Okay, so you can see here I add way more salt. That's fine. Case that's just fine. Now, as far as uh, physics are concerned and stuff, I'm sure that by adding salt and there's still being you know moisture in here, it's just probably going to increase our baking time. I think I don't know. I don't have a degree in thermodynamics, but I don't know how that works. But usually in cooking, from what I know. You add salt stuff, increases the boiling point and all that. So, I don't know. We'll find out, I guess, right? 
I don't know the exact science behind it. If you're a rocket scientist, email me and tell me. <laughs> so once again, kind of got that drop. Not too bad. A little bit thicker. That's good. Um, I'm going to separate into three little balls. Kind of pinch them off there. Like that. Okay. And we're going to try to work fast. We don't want it to get too warm. So kind of pizza dough it up a little bit like this. You can kind of see how I'm just going to move it back and forth. And we're going to elongate this a little bit. Okay. And then we're going to kind of pinch that out. Not too far. Okay. Same thing with this one. The idea is that you're going to kind of let it have its own kind of texture, like kind of stringy texture a little bit. Kind of like, you know, a claw isn't perfect looking. They have kind of this weird, like vascular looking kind of pull to it, even though it's, it's you know, made of non-vascular things. It's not a muscle, but it has kind of like this string look to it. I guess, I don't know, it has something to do with the growth properties of males. So we're going to kind of do that too. Now these are kind of, you know, thick, that's fine. We're going to elongate them right before we put them in to the giant toe. So that's what they look like right now. Okay, they don't look like anything special. That's fine. We're going to kind of pinch these ends off as we put them in. We're going to curl the ends a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and get my giant toe out now. And uh, if you want, go ahead and take a break here for a second. I'm going to have to sneeze in a moment, because apparently my allergies are acting up. So don't mind me. Oh yeah, our giant toe is looking pretty awesome. It's looking super huge. It's going to half hang out of our bowl, a little bit uh, bigger than I had expected. That's fine. Now, normally you're going to let this um, bake for much longer than we're doing tonight, but I'm only concerned about you seeing like the external um, way that it looks. So we're going to kind of let this bake a little bit while longer. But we're more worried about the uh, claws. And if we need to, uh, we can put this in the freezer to cool it later on. Some people say, don't do that, it's going to crack, blah, blah, blah. It's, you know, we're not making cakes. We're making scarlet crafts. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to look awesome. And actually, the <laughs> Sometimes it sounds funny, but the crappier it looks, the more realistic it looks. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a little while. So I'm going to go ahead and take this. I'm going to let it kind of pinch off there. So I'm kind of snapping a little bit. Okay. We want these bear claws to look sharp. I'm going to pat them down a little bit. Don't forget... We have our cool little instruments that allow us to saw things down. They have that kind of uh, grit to them. So we're going to go ahead and use those later on. So don't be, you know, too shy about screwing up. That's the cool thing about art. Is even when you do screw up, you know, you can fix it. It's not like engineering where if you screw up and, you know, hey, there goes a bridge and a couple hundred people. So, all right. There you go. Same thing for this one. I'm going to kind of curl this one around a little bit like that. I'm going to pinch the end off a little bit. Now these are bear claws. Bear claws do their own thing. They don't have to be perfect. I'm running out of room a little bit for the third bear claw. That's okay though. I'm going to kind of use the side. I'm going to go ahead and make this one a little bit, just a tiny bit smaller. Because they vary in size anyway on a bear, right? It's not like they have three matching claws. Okay. And I'm going to pinch that one end off there. And I'm hoping this doesn't expand too much. It might. Actually, you know what? Let me readjust that. Hold on. So we're going to kind of spit them in a yin yang position. You don't want them in strangely so that they kind of collapse into each other and cause problems here. And don't forget, bear claws are kind of curved in the game. So try to keep yours curved if you can. If not, not in the world, I can show you how to fix that, make it still look awesome. Okay? So I got kind of the nasty zombie hand going. If you're doing it right and you're having fun, 
getting a little dirty. You should probably have zombie hand now, too. You take a look 